Hey, I'm Francois from Production Music Live today with Producer Notes and we are looking at this bouncy main stage festival techno type track here in the style of Will Sparks, Australian producer and DJ known for Melbourne bounce, high energy, major festival, main stage vibes. And we are reverse engineering a track from him called Blow Your Mind, super bouncy thing. And that's also why we will have a bunch of tracks here, but we are going to focus on the key elements. We sort of reverse engineer the entire thing using only Ableton stock effects and instruments plus serum. And I want to take a look at the key elements that make this bouncy low end that make this thing work like some giant whiplash and just moves forward. So we have a fully arranged track here lasting more or less five minutes. It starts with an intro and then it builds up and then we go into our first drop. And you can already hear these sort of bass stabs and donks. They are really important. And then there's this transition part. And we go into a first build up. And then there's this fun part before our first main drop here. And whether you enjoy this style or not, production-wise, this is super interesting and super fun to look at. And then we go into a break part, which is more like this trancy, dreamy thing. And so on, we are probably not going to look too much into this one here because we want to see the sort of production world through the eyes of Will Sparks here for those main drops and how to achieve the low end and these stabs and everything. And maybe in a different video, we are going to look at how to do these trancy things. We then have a build up. <laughs> And then we have this pre-drop part here. Follow me. And that's also super interesting from an arrangement perspective because here we are actually playing triplets Whereas in our first drop, we didn't do that. And then we have this. This drop part here that goes back out of the triplets. And then we have our outro. And that's basically our main arrangement here. We have the different tracks structured into different groups. We have a quick vocals group here with those AI generated vocal lines. And then we have a kick and bass group. If I'm quickly soloing this one. That's gnarly. And we have the drums group down here. Kind of funny, you wouldn't have guessed <laughs> that you solo it and it sounds like this. But um, then we have our instruments group below that. And there's so many little bits and pieces in, in this track here that are sort of playing question and answer that we ended up having quite a few tracks. You could probably work with less if you weren't reverse engineering a style and you wanted to sort of uh, get all these single ingredients, right? We are looking at a bunch of them, maybe not all of them. And then we have an effects group with all these risers. And Atmos and stuff. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get started and let's look at the foundations here. And I think I'm going to start in this drop at uh, bar 17. And just uh, take a look at how to put this low end together. So we have kick and bass group here, group and group. And this at the end of the day is our main kick sound. And that's an audio sample here. This, you know, if you do something like that, then it's really about sample selection. You're looking for sound in your sample library that's already getting close to what you need. And then you start EQing out what you might uh, want to get rid of, for example. And also sometimes in, the, in these cases, you're actually working with audio as opposed to going and taking a simpler device, because then you really need to sort of shorten it and, and get the right length, especially if you have this kind of rumbly bass behind it. So here, let's t turn off the processing quickly. So this source sample has quite a bit of stereo information. Uh, make sure you're on good speakers or on good headphones to, to actually hear this. And with this mid side EQ here, we are removing basically all of the stereo information that is sitting, you know, below 450 hertz. And then just carving out some boxy information here. Bass mono, again with utility compression. You just get a little bit more of the high information out of it. Enabling us to emphasize a bit more on the high information, high frequency information. And then just some, you know, slight EQing here in the higher frequencies. What happens in the group so these elements the kick like this main kick the kick reverb and the bass are then grouped into this element and again all the bass parts are going into this kick and bass group but this only has two auto filters for our arrangement purposes sometimes we want a low cut sometimes we want a high cut depending on where we are in the arrangement but this is not really processing all that much here so we can look at the second element, which is a kick reverb, also audio here. And so we don't really have a, a classical rumble because this one is our high information, high frequency information on top of the kick. And it's basically a kick sample cut off in the low frequencies and ran through a very, very long tail reverb and then run through another one because if I'm turning this off this already sounds like this industrial uh, hall reverb put together with the kick super clean and now we are just giving it 10 more seconds of decay time with a dry wet of uh, 31% and then we're rolling off any low information that we might have to blur it out even more. So we have a good transient on the main kick, some good mid frequency information in there and then we are putting this kick reverb element on top. And then below that we have So what, what are the notes here? We are playing quarter notes. D minor is the key of our track. And then all together. So not a real rumble here. It's a simple offbeat type pattern because we're playing these quarter notes and actually have some heavy side chaining going on. And 
And what is the bass doing? We are playing saw waves here, running them through a 24 decibels per octave filter, no effects applied behind it. And then we just have our envelope basically looks like this, pretty simple. And I think it's even the default state of Serum. And then this is how we open up our, our MG Low 24 filter. But just for a little bit. Drive up 23%. So this is the simplest bass sound source, actually, you could imagine. And then we are running it through saturation, a tad of erosion, a bit of EQing, you know, this is more what EQing looks like when you reverse engineer something to figure out how they exactly did it in, in a track that you're referencing. If you were producing a track from scratch, your EQing would not look like this. So t keep it uh, with a, take it with a grain of salt, basically, because this can also be just one device. And what is happening here, you're rolling off a little bit of low end and then you're emphasizing on one or two frequencies that you want to push out a little further. And then you're sidechaining it. Yeah, that's worth. So the saturation is actually worth a being. The erosion, not so much. But what about after the saturation? So if you want a bit more of this erosion type sign sound, then you can turn it in. Sometimes also nice. This also reminds you of Boris Brecher. He's doing this a lot. The saturator is fully active here. It's like drive it all the way up. We have wave shaper, shaper mode activated and drive set to 100%. So this thing is really like acting out here. So these are our foundation ingredients. If you get this right, you have achieved a lot in your track already. Now you have the transient of the kick. You have this warm, bouncy bass that's heavily sidechained. And then you have this already atmospherical feeling of some kind of width to the track with this reverb kick element on top of it. And now, you go in to quickly check the effects section. Here we have this Atmo track. And we're getting a bit more of this industrial feel on top. It's also heavily sidechained. What is the sample doing? It's just pink. What is that? Pink noise? with a slight tone in there. And then you're just emphasizing on a resonant frequency that you want to carve out. And then high cut these higher frequencies that we uh, later want to sort of cover with our hi-hats and everything. Now we put this element together with, with our kick bass part here. And now this thing already has depth, which is great. And then we later even combi combine that with, there's, um, is it this perk? Just sorry for jumping around, but I'm just like trying to set it up, set up the key ingredients. So it's, you have very simple elements, but it doesn't sound empty. Yeah, I think this one is it. So. Yeah, what's going on here? So we have 16s notes playing with this serum device. And what is happening?
basically use this noise here. Run it through quick filter. And then we carve out a lot of the low end and the high end. <laughs> which we don't want to use here. Then we heavily sidechain it with this shaper. So if you've seen, ha haven't seen this before, this is basically working like the LFO tool or um, some other third party sidechaining devices. Uh, this one works if you are four to the floor. We are playing at, by the way, 132 BPM here. If we were playing hip hop, this would not work because we are relying on, to, on the four to the floor pattern. And then we are running all of this through seven seconds of uh, reverb plus a little bit of, what's that, long reverb on our um, return channel here. This fast perk is one of those elements that help you get already depth to your track when you just have a bunch of elements and you don't want it to sound empty. Okay, so that was a bit long-winded to get here, but I think you know, if you get this right, then you can build your track around it, but you have a great foundation. And now what really makes this stuff fun here are these little shots and bits in the instruments group, which I'm skipping into quickly, where, you know, you don't fill it up all the time, but you're putting in these bits and pieces that make it fun to listen to. And let's quickly listen to this part here. Now what was going on here? You see all these little bits, you have the low synth, you have this bass shot, you have this stab sound here combined with this other stab sound, and then you have something called bass sustain and a draw pluck. So let's listen again. So this is what makes the style and it might look like uh, a lot of work or a bit of work at least, but I mean, this is what, what puts it together, right? At the end of the day. So what, what could we look at first? Maybe this bass shot thing here is interesting because we are using wavetable and what it does is stuff like this. And then... So kind of cool, very simple patterns. You know, you're playing the root note, we're playing it shorter, then we're playing it a bit longer. And basically we're playing around. If I'm enabling automation, we're playing around with the auto filter. So. Open, close back down. Then keep it down here. And so on, and we're doing it uh, throughout the track. Let's play this together with our kick and bass. And then it's also about positioning it right, because this one is in the second position. We are again at uh, 16 notes here. It's always a good idea to to put it put one into the second position and then many of the things you're playing into the third position because that will always work. It's not in my, well that's personal taste I have to say but in in my mind it's never really a great idea to put it to to put too many of these elements onto the first hit because that hardly ever sounds groovy or it's much harder to 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 make groovy. OK, 
Okay, so and how is the sound coming together here? We basically have vintage mini filter on oscillator one, nothing on oscillator two, and we are running this through this low pass filter here, which opens up and down. And what is the matrix doing? The ampl amplifier um, envelope is controlling filter one. So this is the f uh, filter movement. That's why it's plucky and it's set to mono. And then we have we um, have this mapping here where we have FM, where we are playing around with the amount of the shape of our wavetable. Introducing some of this frequency modulation type sound to it. And then everything runs through a pedal sort of the same wave shaper saturation fully applied here and then through some two seconds decay time reverb through a drum bus and then we're cutting some low end which is already covered by our kick and bass group and here's an auto filter uh, that's the one we actually um, automate over time so so this one here is when do we ever automate this one? I kind of forgot. Ah, here in the end. Okay, it, uh, no, we never really use that. Okay, so we're doing the um, arrangement automation of this track through this one, through this auto filter. And then behind it, we have a sidechain. So what's happening? Uh, let's list, let's A, B this pedal saturator and drum bus. Pedal saturator drum bus. <laughs> okay, pedal on top. Let's actually listen to it here. So more mids, more treble, more fuzz. Saturator. Now we're getting 10 decibels louder. Um, if you put up your volume, put it back down now. Well, this one does all the heavy lifting here, kind of like the one on our um, bass, on our offbeat bass. And now, okay, reverb without. If you ever need this sound. We need it more smooth and more distributed. And then through the drum bus. This one seems to dampen. Interesting. This one kind of dampens the sound out here. And then again, we have low cut and this is our automation filter. So this is some of the most important stuff in this track, in my opinion. Then we obviously have these little donks, which are super cool. <laughs> and yeah, okay, let's quickly look at this one because I know some people will think this is fun to remake. It's two saw waves, actually three saw waves is this one, but this one is pretty quiet. These have higher levels here and then we are running them through low pass filter as well. Um, this is the shape of our envelopes. <laughs> So you quickly have this 131 milliseconds of the attack, bringing it slowly in. And then we are also running it through an EQ here and through what, what, what type of compression? That's a regular compression. And then there's um, a bit of reverb in Serum. These like chorus and distortion are not active in Serum. And then heavily OTT'd. So multi-band. So we have a lot of the high-end tail here. 
and it keeps standing also a little bit um so this one is also brushing out the reverb tail from serum a bit more so we already have the reverb here with a decay time of what is this um around five seconds and this is already standing behind the sound and then we put an ott behind that because this is still happening in the plugin this effect and then behind the plugin we have this effect set on top of everything like the effect order and so this one also affects the reverb <laughs> Then we are even compressing the whole thing. So we are also compressing the tail, smoothening out everything, more, more sausage-like waveform if you were to print it out in audio. And then we're removing the, some of the low end and again, um, auto filter here to automate these over time whenever they come in. Okay, so that was kind of scattered here for a bit, but I think these are our main elements that make this that constitute the sound and make it fun and let's go to get a little bit of an overview so i'm closing this i'm quickly closing all these groups so we can get some orientation where are we so we were basically looking at stuff here Okay, so maybe we can look at a bunch of drum elements because kick and bass uh, group are currently covered for this part. And what else is happening here? We have our drums group. This one um, just has a little bit of reverb on top of the entire group. And then this EQ here that's sort of, you know, making sure we are not too high frequent in our um, everything above, what's that, 7K, 7 kilohertz. And so we have this clap sound here. Super clean transient. So this is not some washed out clap, So, but it has a very short and snappy um, transient, as you can see. And now I quickly want to check something with the track delay. So I'm activating track delay. This is how you can move single tracks compared to everything else back and forth in terms of how many milliseconds do you want to it to come in early or late and we can see from the positioning of this clap it's too early but it actually comes in early we are not correcting this with the track delay so it should sound like an early clap let's listen in absolutely if we were to correct it and set it right into position how much is this if you ever want to figure out how many milliseconds do I need to move something around, zoom in and look at these numbers down here. This is a 440, 100, and this is a 50, and that thing, what is that? Is that 30? Let's move it back 30 or 27 and see if it's in position. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it's already late. So now it would be on grid. But that's not how it's intended here. It's intended to be super early. So it kind of snaps into, into the kick. And this one, this snap again is playing early. So let's listen to the solo. Early. Put the kick in. Interesting, huh? This kind of seems to support this whiplash type feeling of the entire track to put the claps early, to set them early. Okay, what are our hi-hats doing here? This one sounds nasty if you listen to it in solo. Oh my goodness. But you need something to cut through the mix at the end of the day. There's so many elements in this track. And that's one of those takeaways when you're producing music. Sometimes 
the way something sounds when it's soloed does not matter at all because we are at the end of the day <laughs> we are listening to the track in the mix and if it makes sense in the mix don't worry about what it sounds like when you solo it <laughs> Yeah, and it does make sense in the mix. So we have this Veska hi-hat sample here from the Veska as an artist, a drum code artist uh, sample pack. It's part of our Peak Time Techno by Veska. It's this uh, 274 sample pack. And that's where we took this from, then ran through a vocoder, shelved off some of the low end and and then compression behind it, double compression. What's the vocoder doing? Oh yeah. Oh, that thing is nasty when you, when you play it without the vocoder and the vocoder kind of blurs it out a bit. So vocoder with noise, obviously, like we have noise here um, and then we have the dry wet set to 50%, 51%, and the formants down. Can also turn them up. We want to keep them down. So we have this dirty, noisy hi hat thing brushing along here. Goes through a room verb. So uh, that's return channel D. Room verb, shorter, decay time. That's 360 milliseconds. That's a very short decay time. But then it seems like you have some longer tail here. So quickly going back. What's going on with that? Doesn't seem to be on this group, uh, on this track here. But what about the top drums group? Uh-huh. Just a low cut. So group in group. It seems to be this one. Yeah, and we're throwing this onto all of our snaps, claps, hats. Bit pan to the right. Then we have this hi-hat fast element. And that's another one of those. Uh, 16th note here, super short. You know, in the MIDI. Not like this. With tail, but super short just the transients and this is serum sound source and we're just using the bright white and we have this super short decay on our envelope here which controls the level -dum -bum -bum. ever so slightly moving that phase around but basically this is the story you need to focus on and then cut the lows. And these elements, that one is also one of those that work together with the fast perk. Right, and that, that's how you get depth to these sounds. Open hat behind it, below it. Yeah, that's always good. That's another um, white noise type element here. Also just bright white activated in serum. This time our decay or envelope looks a little different. At least it's, it's ch -ch -ch, basically. And then again, rolling off low end, um, moving dimension. This like this dimension expansion type rack, which makes it wider. It moves it to the sides. Like, uh, listen again, A being this on, on your headphones, uh, left and right. Sound is centered. And then now it's on the sides. And up there in our, you know, uh, panorama, we can always do that in the high frequencies. It's going to be fine. Just make sure you don't interfere with any hi hats. Clap huge. Oh, we didn't. Uh, listen to this what this element does in our mix because this positioning is perfect this is like in the fourth position of this beat and in the third position of this one 
And what does that do? Yeah. Ba -ba. It's all about the groove. Um, clap huge. When this is our impact at the beginning. You know, imagine you're in a giant industrial hall and it's empty and it's like 160 meters long and one guy on the other end in, in the staircases drops his screwdriver box. And that's basically our sound. You can almost record anything. <laughs> doesn't have to be a clap. Okay, we have snare build-ups. And we just rendered them out here. And yeah, that's about it for these sounds. So we took a look at our drums. Okay, cool. So let's keep going. Let's go on and take a look at what we are doing with some of the instruments. So we have this arpeggio running along through the, through the beginning of the track. But this is not really such a profoundly astonishing element that I want to focus on a lot now because you can use basically whatever type sound here and keep it a little filtered to sort of introduce your track. The much more interesting one is a different one. Any ARP basically here. It's a saw wave, some, I don't know, is that even ever going up? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> So you just need something here. And then the much more interesting one is this one here, this stabby plug sound. And if you were wondering, why is this thing in a sampler? The reason is, this we want to pitch it around here and it, we want it to sound more pitched and we thought it's easier to do that in the sampler in this case than doing it through the synth so you just record the stabby plug sound in your synth and then you take the sample put it into a sampler and then you know you can you can man manipulate it uh, nicely and play around with the pitching the pitch envelope here and then you know have these parts at the end because this is kind of our giant whiplash element here at the beginning of this draw part let's quickly listen back close your eyes follow me kind of like on a Roman galley boat ship with a lot of like hundreds of military Romans ro uh, rowing and this other guy pounding his drum and everybody's rowing in the same speed. Close your eyes, follow me. So absolutely pounding. We have bass sustain. Oh yeah. These are the sounds that matter. So let's listen to this one again in context. Quickly turning this off. Yeah. 
So what is this one doing? We're just playing a long note, D. What was the sound doing? The sound is running through a redox. We have 16 voices of a saw wave here. A multiband compressor already active in Serum in the effect, but then it gets interesting behind that. So let's quickly, let's turn them all off and then add them in one by one. Okay, let's quickly check something on the group and turn this off as well. So our movement is coming from this utility here. We're getting a trans gate envelope shaper to control this. That's where the movement comes from. Let's go back to the sound. Run it through a redux. <laughs> okay, so a lot a lot of jitter. What's that? 43%. Um rate 6.2k and drive head all the way up bits set to three. That's so nasty. So overdrive on top of that, 50%. Holy cow. And then we take this and run it through an OTT. Uh, 35%. And so, yeah, taking out a bit of the mids. Okay, and now we need to shape the sound because we won't hear anything else if we keep it that way. We just played it like this. It's also interesting how it how it's perfectly, you know, it's like math. It's like, okay, two, one, a half. Always the same position. And this was our drop. No coincidence here. This is super symmetrical. So we're taking off some of the high-end information here to leave room. We just want it in this frequency range and then uh, dimension expander, moving it to the sides again. Okay, that's much more difficult to to actually hear. Oh well, it isn't. It's just nice. You can use a delay, you know, with the Haas effect and then a grain delay behind it to sort of position sounds in your panorama. That's why this comes, always comes in handy, especially in, in mixing later. And then we have... Um, Sidechain behind this again through this envelope shaper here and we have a second bass sustain sound under this one yeah, And this one is equally nasty Logic is pretty much the same less unison here and some oscillator B that actually uh, plays something that's a lot more audible And the detuned, so these heavily detuned voices are what introduce this nasty feeling. Also here, again, in this one, this is heavily de detuned. And you get more of the notes if you, if you put detuning down. I think we had it here. Okay, so... Same story here, basically, um, and then more erosion on top of it. 
This one with wide noise really smoothens it out. Okay, so these are also important elements here that make it fun, these little stabs. And I just checked the clock and we are already like 40, 45 minutes into this video. So I'm going to cut to the chase here a bit and skip a bunch of elements because I wanted to talk about one more thing. Let me know in the comments below if you want to have an absolute in-depth video on this going through every single sound. But uh, let's go back and zoom out for a second. Listen to this drop again. So this is our regular 16th notes drop. And then the interesting thing about this track is you have a second drop here after our break and build up parts and that's the triplet drop. And I quickly wanted to take a look at this one because how, how does this even work? Because you still have the same kicks and you still have the same offbeat bass down here. So it does. Nothing too much triplet about it here. And then we have this extra triplet bass. This gnarly sound, this gnarly sound here. If I'm, yeah, I, I need to set it to the triplet grip, uh, a grid. I already, already did this and then you can see. Da 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 this is often some of the some of the setting you don't really nail in the first try here so that's how it's done setting it to triplets and then going na 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 this one makes it fluffy okay Uh, the bass sound itself, how is it put together? Sounds super cool as well, I think. It has saw wave here, another saw wave there. Distortion is off here, so let's take a look at what we achieve with overdrive. I think it's this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, in processing, you would probably, if you were working from scratch, you would not do it like this. This is again a track that's um, it. The processing on this track looks like this because it's reverse engineered. We listen to something and then we try to figure out how the hell did they do this. And then we find the source sound and we're like, okay, m probably a bit more overdrive on that, probably a bit more OTT on that. So let's try that. And then probably a bit more saturation on that. You would, this is more like the reverse engineering type approach to getting to these sounds. Um, usually if, if you're a producer, you probably st go more forward thinking and start with a source sound that's closer to what you want to achieve as opposed to starting with a sound like this and then coming up with the idea of so first I'm going to put an EQ like this and then later I'm putting an overdrive and then much later I'm going to put a saturator obviously nobody will or not many people probably will work like this but uh, it's still an interesting exercise here because we can study how this stuff comes together and, and how to actually get, you know, that's the beauty of reverse engineering stuff. You're like, ah, oh, that's how you get from this type of sound to that type of sound. That's how you get from a sound that sounds like this to something like this. Nice. And then carving this out, overdrive, down here, not in the high frequencies, but down there. OK. 
Okay. OTT. Dimension. Again, if we quickly open it, if you want to see how this is set up, this is a delay, Haas effect, grain delay. And then some surgical EQing here. We then have mid side. Um, this allows you to increase the gain of the mid and decrease the one on the side or vice versa. And then again, um, side chain behind it. So this is our triplet base. And then probably the last element I'm going to talk about in this video is this perfectly symmetrical question and answer interplay between these elements here. So we have um, lead detune. This is what starts in the triplet drop. Then followed. So that's kind of our question one, answer one. Question two. Answer two. And question one is being supported by this reverse effect here. So, right, so we have these. And this reverse effect is the tail of this sound. So, this is a recorded reverb tail. What you hear right now in the background. If you record this tail right behind my voice and then we reverse it, you get this. And so we have question one introducing answer one and then, well, actually let's take a look at the MIDI of question one. Nice pitchy play here and what what are our uh, wavetables? So we had a saw wave here and it's uh, through A, A sim plus. That's, uh, that's what we are running it through here. Where was it? It was here. <laughs> and then uh, MG, a basic MG. Where we're flipping. Flipping around and let's, uh, and we have five voices here, three voices there. And what else? We uh, run it through dimension, expander, through chorus, through multiband compression. Sounds very different without it. And then uh, reverb is not applied here. And then you, again, you see these crazy EQ shapes here. Those are still, um, don't worry about them too much, but this is again, when you reverse engineer something, your EQ shapes look like this. Because then you realize, oh, I need a little bit more of this and a li little less of this and then that's how you can EQ this whole thing together. Okay, let's skip this here. It's it's uh, the main point I want to get across is we want a nice question and answer pattern in our tri uh, triplet drop. It's just some lower support for the sound. Okay, this one. Monster detune sound here with saw waves again. Saw, saw, detune, detune, unison, five voices. And um, reverb tails behind it. 
and then high lead pitchy short reverb decay behind it how do we get it so pitchy uh, it's about the attack bit of chorus and then this envelope messes around with the EQ frequency here and also with our pitch that's how it gets so envelope 3 is controlling the pitch up here if we quickly look at yeah chorus pitch so can look at the matrix as well and you see amount output if you want to copy these settings and have this nice pitchy feel okay and that's how it gets snappy pitchy short let's play them uh, just these elements Yeah, and then you heard this bass stab here again filter bass shot and this is what makes tracks interesting and groovy basically posi positioning all these little elements here and taking your time to make it sound interesting okay so I'm aware that we weren't able to cover all these elements here. This is just like this little treasure box from the Techno Production Kit Antithesis Follow Me project file here, PML 318. Putting links into the description for this project file, for this kit, and also to our everything bundle and our drum packs mentioned in this video as well. Links in the description of this video in the show notes. Summing up, I think uh, let, let's quickly go back and focus on, so on some of the main elements here. So you want this industrial Atmo behind your track to fill it out and make it sound, you know, and at the end, end of the day makes it sound professional. So if I'm quickly um, closing this, it was super important in our um, bass to have this reverb kick on top. And combine that with an Atmo like this one. And then also with some of these drum elements that are, um, what is that, this perk element, fast perk. These are super important. And then you have these bass donks and stabs here in the be beginning, we covered in the beginning that make your track sound interesting. You have these quick shots and then in your drop part, you have these question answer patterns, or is that here, in your instruments that also make it sort of fun and interesting. And they uh, are playing different roles. One is short and snappy, one is reversed and longer, one has a longer reverb tail, one is very short. Special in this track is in the arrangement that you have a regular drop and then later you have a triplet drop it's kind of unusual but it, it works nicely here and it's kind of fun i think one of the main keys of this sound is if you don't get a clean low end that works nothing else matters it won't be fun listening to this track so it's really important to that's i think we covered the first 10 minutes of this video just the the low end part here because you really need to get this right you need to get the balancing right so in this case good transient on the kick very good bass foundation and then the trick is to make it sound like this you know rumble uh, to have the reverb of the kick just sitting on top of it in this case like Yeah, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to comment below what you want to see next or what else from this track should be covered in a future video. 
Give it a like if you enjoyed this content. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll talk to you again soon. And now I'm doing a playback of the track. Thank <laughs> you.